Hey guys, welcome back to Matt's Whip Shop. Today I'm going to show you guys how I made this six foot nylon bull whip. I like to call this my skeleton whip. It is a whip that I designed for beginner whip makers. It is simply a loose strand core with a nylon braided overlay. There are no transition or heel knots. It just uses a uh, rubber chair tip. The only knots we will be tying in this are the fall hitch, which of course I will show you how to do, but it's a pretty simple knot. It's just some um, half hitches. But yeah, it's a really simple build and let's get to it. Hey guys, here we are in my little whip making office <laughs> and for this project we're going to need some paracord, a quarter inch rope, but make sure you get the rope that you can remove the core from because we will be removing small sections of it, not all of it, but some of it. Um, some hockey tape and some artificial sinew preferably as well as some nylon thread that we will use for bonding sorry binding and as well as for the crackers once we finish the whip now some tools you're going to need for this are some pair of scissors or or some little snips one of those two um, it'll be really helpful to have something to clamp your strands with if you ever have to take a break but it's not necessary um, you will need a lighter and you will need a tape measure or a ruler of some sort. Um, now some tools that will really help that aren't necessary is a paint pen because this will help you keep track of distances. Um, some sort of fid will help when we get at the end to tie our fall hitch and yeah that's essentially it okay so first things first we need a 10 inch section of the quarter inch steel rod i've already cut mine but you can cut it using a hacksaw or a sawzall or some bolt cutters anything you have and then what you want to make sure you do is take a file and round off that edge there just to make sure it's not going to cut into the paracord or the rope or anything so that we can make sure that it stays on there and won't just come off the handle eventually. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Uh, one other thing that I forgot to mention is you will need a vise or something to grip your whip later on in this process. But for now, we are going to start with cutting our material lengths. So, we're going to start off with a four foot chunk of our quarter inch rope. I will link all of this material in the description, by the way, um, and they are affiliate links. So if you guys do purchase off of those, it will give me a little bit of kickback and that would be really great. I would really appreciate that guys. So yeah, I will make sure to link all these things in the description and yeah you can purchase them there awesome so we got our four foot chunk of quarter inch rope we're going to pull out two inches of this inner core because we want to slip it over our quarter inch steel rod two inches so I'm just going to slide this down and this is the side I'm going to measure because this has no core in it now, right? So I'm just going to slide it out a little bit more and I'm going to measure that because that's probably about two inches there. Great. Yeah. So now I have two inches. That core stops right here, guys. Since we pulled it down some, if you can see that, that's where the core stops. This other side can just get snipped off. For now 
and this is going to go on the end of our steel rod like so slide it in there nice and tight now that steel rod should be touching right up against that inner core and from here we're going to take a little bit of our hockey tape and we're going to use this to secure it onto our handle I'm just going to put it on here and we're going to spiral it down the handle to keep it on there nice and secure and putting the hockey tape on the handle here will also make it a little easier um, to bind our other strands to the handle here just because the bare metal can be a little bit slippery at times so wrapping it with a little bit of hockey tape can help give it just a little bit of grip there so now whoops we've got our rope attached to our handle here we're going to cut out the rest of our strands the strand lengths I use for this I will also put in the description below guys um, but we are going to need a few pieces here um, and these ones are all going to be ungutted guys so you're going to leave the inner strands inside of it because we need it for the bulk and for the weight of this whip the ball chain for this whip is mostly used to give it some weight to try and balance it out a little better so we're going to go ahead and cut some now that we have all our strands cut let's go ahead and bind it onto our core here so now we should have our eight strands here and of paracord and our five strands of ball chain we're going to attach these to our core here now this can be a little bit tricky but we're going to take our eight strands and our eight and our five uh, lengths of ball chain there and we're going to put it around the steel rod it's going to be right at the end of the handle here so we want to make sure we're keeping it all there it can go a little bit past um, but try to keep it pretty close to the edge there but once we get these eight on here we want to keep it fairly even around the steel rod and we're simply going to take a little bit of hockey tape and we're just going to tape around the top here it's going to help us keep them on the end of our handle all right so we got the strands on here now we're going to work on the ball chain so again we've got five lengths of ball chain we're just going to lay it on here and use the tape to secure it onto the end of the handle as well just going to do it one at a time again trying to keep everything as even as possible you know, try and space these around as best we can you're not going to get it perfectly even but you're going to try and get it as even as you can we're just going to put a couple wraps of hockey tape around there keep it nice and secure and then we'll snip this off now again to bind this we're using our nylon thread and to stick it between our toes we're going to simply take our nylon thread make sure it's nice and tight wrap it around here a couple times make sure it's not going to come off and we're going to use our feet and our hands using upward tension to keep the thread as tight as we can and we're going to slowly rotate the handle
to keep our threads and our strands binded onto the handle. And I'm trying to keep these strands from twisting as best I can, keep them nice and straight as I work my way down the handle of the whip. And we're gonna wrap this pretty far down just to keep everything nice and contained. It'll make it easier later on in the process. I'm not pulling super tight here either guys. I'm just trying to keep strands attached to the core at this moment. I'm not trying to bind everything super tight. We will get to that in a minute. Okay, that should do it for now. I didn't go quite as far as I said I was going to, but this should keep it on and we'll just work our way back up to the top of the whip. And now that we're at the top here, I'm just gonna cut off a little extra. Right there. And I'm just gonna tie a couple of half hitch knots by making a loop and then putting our loose end through that loop, pulling it tight, we'll do it again. So now we're gonna do that binding I talked about. So we're gonna start taping again from the top here. We're gonna tape the whole handle with hockey tape. Here we're at the end of the handle. As you can see, the handle's right there. We're gonna go down about a foot past the handle. So we're just gonna keep wrapping. This can be easier if you put it into a clamp here. Okay, so. Like I said, I'm not wrapping it super tight. I'm going to go down about a foot past the handle here. So we're going to go a little bit past where we wrap the strands onto the thing there. I might have gone a little bit past a foot, but I don't know. We're about right on. So the binding we're also going to do with our nylon thread here. And the binding serves to make this a stiffer transition. As you can tell, it's pretty loose here right now. Our goal is to get this nice and stiff coming off the handle. But we're gonna start off with our nylon thread, just about an inch above where the handle ends. So we can tell this is where the handle ends. We're gonna start about right here. And we're gonna go around it and we're gonna bind in a crisscross pattern. As you can see there, so I got, whoop, slipped off. So we're gonna go down and then we're gonna go back up. So we're gonna bind this pretty tight at first because we wanna make sure this is a nice, nice stiff transition. We're just gonna go down and back up and down and up keeping that nice crisscross pattern and we're trying to basically work our way down the whip with this to keep it nice and tight and right here especially on that transition we're going to bind it nice and tight so that it stiffens up as you can see it's already starting to stiff up a little bit i don't want to pull tight enough that your string is going to break but we want to make sure we're pulling tight enough that it's actually going to bind up that transition and as we work our way down the whip we're going to loosen our binding some so it's not super tight all the way down right guys Okay, so now we're about three quarters of the way down, maybe a little less, but we're gonna start working our way back up. And what we're gonna do here is, we're just gonna try and put our strand 
in the middle of our open spaces, right? So we don't want to lay it, we don't want to put it right here where we've already, where we've already bound it. We want to put it in the middle of those two strands, right, right there. So that it continues to bound, bind it. And as we're going back up, we're going to start tightening our binding just a little bit. And then again, as we get to this transition, we're going to be pulling pretty hard again. So we can get that nice stiff transition that we look for in a bullwhip. We're going to hit this pretty hard just because this is the only time we're actually going to bind this whip because after this it's just the overlay. So we want to make sure that we get that pretty good. All right, I'm going to take it up just a little bit past here. Now we're going to work our way back down and we're going to do the same thing on our way down. Find those open spaces and lay our strand in it. And again, up here we're pulling pretty hard so we can get that nice tight transition. And this time we're gonna go down to a few inches past the end of our hockey tape here. Because um, we wanna make sure that we're binding these farther out every time. And again, as we go down, we're gonna loosen up our binding a little bit till by the time we get to the end here, we're going to be putting almost no pressure on it at all. We go back to that crisscross pattern where we're going. Over and then crossing back up, down and back up. Okay, we're gonna do a couple more crisscrosses, maybe one more. And then we're gonna start going back up to the top there. So again, just gonna find these empty spaces in between the existing threads as we work our way back up to the top. Okay guys, we're getting back up to the top here. Again, we're binding pretty tight as we get to this transition point. As you can see, it's already quite a bit stiffer than it was before. As we get up to the top here, what we're going to do is Grab another piece of thread or string of some sort, like artificial sinew, for example, or anything you have, maybe the inner strands of a paracord. And we're going to make a loop. I like to just leave it on the spool still so I'm not wasting any material. But what we're going to do is place a loop on our whip here and we're just going to wrap over top of it about five times one two and i like to do that crisscross pattern still as i work my way back up to the top that's one two three four last time five and as we bring it back around the back we're going to take our scissors here and we're just going to hold that with my pinky, snip this. We're going to stick it through the loop and we're just going to pull that out. So now this strand is stuck underneath these other strands and it won't come loose. Pull that tight. and snip it off. Done. So now our binding is done. 
And as you can see, it is way stiffer now than it was when we first started. Now we can cut our strands for our overlay. Okay, so now we've got all of our overlay strands cut, but before we attach them, we're just gonna take some hockey tape and we're just gonna give a couple extra wraps around the bottom of the handle here. I'm just gonna start at the top here. And we're just gonna work our way down a little bit here. A little bit. And then work our way back up to the top. We're just trying to bulk this up a little bit at the heel of the handle here. We can go back down. This will be important when we finish our overlay. the last finishing touches and that should be good there rip that off and let's go ahead and tie our overlay strands on we have our handle in the vise here and we have our eight overlay strands here and this is one of the reasons why I cut um, the strands in the middle and melt them back together again because one it helps take out the inner strands and two uh, we now will use it to find the centers of our strands because we know wherever we melted it is the center of our strand here and that's going to be important as we tie these on to our whip so for this particular one I'm going to be separating the chocolate brown from the black, so it'll be, you know, half and half. And I'm going to simply put these, I'm going to put the centers of the strands, so the melted parts, behind the handle of our whip. I'm going to drape the left side over first and then the right side. So the right side is over top. And then we're going to find the ends of our black strands here. Now what we're going to do is just going to push the right side back a little bit to form a small loop on the left hand side here. And I'm going to push these four ends through that loop. Hopefully you guys can see this here. Now that I got those ends through the loop, I'm just going to pull this loop closed again, pulling on the individual strands on the left. And again, trying to make sure that the halfway points stay behind the whip there. Now from there, I'm going to pull individually on each of these strands until that middle portion hits the center here. We got one, two, right there. Must be one of our long strands. Three and four. Okay, now that we've got our strands tied on to our handle here, we are going to begin plaiting. There are many ways to plait a handle and a whip, but I'm just going to move this up a little bit. We're going to start with a simple one known as. Uh, I've heard it referred to as the whip maker's plait, uh, but I believe the official term is herringbone plait. And basically, um, since these strands here are pointing to the upper right, we're going to take the upper 
right strand and we're going to bring it around the back and we're going to go under four and then over these four here there's four there i promise one two three four now <clears throat> this strand is pointing to the upper left we're going to take the upper left strand we're going to go around the back under four over four and again, it's pointing to the upper right. So we're going to go around the back, under four, over four. Pointing to the upper left, under four, over four. And try not to pull this too tight yet, guys, because we will be sliding this up to the top of our handle here for the... to the heel of the handle there. So don't pull it too tight yet because we will have to move it up. Do a couple more passes here and then we will be moving it to the top of our handle. I think that should do it there. I should be able to move it up. So we're gonna undo our vise here. And we're just gonna try to slide this up our handle. It can be a little bit tricky with the hockey tape on there, but we just got to slide it up. If we can, might have mine just a little bit too tight. Okay, guys, I got it to the end of my whip here. Our goal is to get it just past the edge of the whip. Um, so it should be covering it completely on the top there, if you guys can see that. So it's covering the top of the end of my whip here. And from here, you're just going to tug each individual strand. Try and get it nice and snug here. Nice and tight. Don't worry if it looks a little bit crappy. Because this part will be getting covered by our rubber chair leg tip. Rubber chair tip here, so... It will get covered, so don't worry too much about it. From here, we're just going to stick it back in our vise, right on the very end there. And we're going to continue plaiting again. Uh, the strand's pointing to the upper right. So we're gonna take the upper right strand around the back under four, over four. Pointing to the upper left, around the back, under four, over four. It can be a little tricky, but like I said, with some practice, you'll get the hang of it. And make sure guys to untangle your strands every once in a while, because otherwise you might be spending, you know, 20 minutes trying to get some strands untangled and it's really annoying so we're just going to keep going on with this you know under four over four pattern until we reach about 14 inches okay guys so we're at about 14 inches here measuring from the very end up here and it's time to drop our very first strand. So if we look here, we're looking for the shortest strand on the right hand side, which is going to be this guy right here. That's our shortest strand. So we are going to undo a couple passes because we want this guy to be below the strand here where this guy is. So. Undo one pass, 
and two passes. So now we're a little less than 14 inches, but that's okay. It's just kind of a rough, rough estimate where we want our strands to be. It doesn't have to be exact. We just want it approximately there. Okay, so now if we look at this strand here, we have four strands underneath it, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this strand and we're going to put it underneath these four strands and we're just going to pull it into the center here. See that? So it was here. We just lift up these four strands, pull it into the center. Now from here, we're just going to keep plaiting but now when we bring because this is pointing to the upper left right we're going to bring from the left side back now we're going to go under four over three right because we dropped a strand under four over four on the left and under four over three on the right And keep going another couple passes here so we want to make sure we get it nice and tight over top of the strand now that we've plotted down a little bit we're just going to tighten all these strands here And we're just going to give this guy a little tug, not too hard, because again, we don't want to cause a gap here. But we're just going to pull it, make sure it's nice and stug, snug. And then we're just going to keep going. Under four, over four on the left. Whoops, sorry about that, guys. And under four, over three on the right. Okay, we're going to go a couple more passes and then we're going to drop this. It's going to be a little bit less than 16 inches, but again, it just all depends on where these strands land in the plaiting, pretty much. Okay, so now our shortest strand is right here where we want it. What we're going to do first is take our scissors here or snips or whatever you have and we're just going to cut out the strand that we already dropped right so now that's out of the core Oops, sorry about that guys And we're going to swing this one to the core. Again, there's four underneath it. You want as many strand underneath it as you can when you drop these guys. Um, but we're just going to lift that up. Slide into the middle here. Again, not pulling hard enough that it's going to cause a gap there. And we're just going to continue on. So starting pointing to the upper right. So we're going to take this one around the back and again, under four over three so now we're in an even 14 plot seven on each side under four over three on both the left and the right so we're just going to keep plotting another few plots again guys And then
once we've established a few plots over top of this one. I'm just going to pull them all tight again. And give this guy just a little tug. If you could see it up there, it was tightening just a little bit. Again, we don't want to pull it too tight to cause any gaps, but just tight enough to make sure that it's not going to be loose, right? Now that we're down a couple inches from where we dropped this strand, which is up here, we're going to cut this piece of paracord out of the core again. Sorry guys. <clears throat> okay, so we're down a couple inches. Our, drans, our strand drop was up here. <clears throat> we're just gonna take our snips again and just snip that guy out of there. And then we're just gonna keep on plaiting until we're around the 20 inch mark okay guys so here i am around the 20 inch mark and it's time to drop our third strand another one here from the right hand side so again we're just going to pull these strands tight and we're going to take this uh, again this is the shortest one from the right hand side Usually I try to go in a pattern so it'll be right, left, right, left, right, left. Or if I'm starting on the left side, then left, right, left, right, left, right. So here I am. I'm just going to pull it under these three. Again, not pulling it too hard. And then I just want to tighten these ones up underneath it. So now, um, now... Since we have six strands here, it's going to be under three, over three on the right side, and still under four, over three on the left side until we drop one from the left side here. Okay, so now that we've got a few passes over top of it, we can go ahead and pull everything nice and tight. We'll just give this a quick tug. Make sure it doesn't pull it down too far, right? So we want to make sure it's a somewhat seamless drop. Okay, and it's this top brown one here that we're going to be dropping. So this is going to be around 22 inches. Might be a little more, a little less. And again, before we drop the strand, we're going to snip out the previous strand here. And from the left side, again, this is the one we're dropping, the shortest one. Just gonna lift up these three. Slide it under, pull everything nice and tight. And now, again, under three, over three on the left and the right now. And this is going to keep going until We get to around 25-ish inches. I kind of base my my strand drops, guys, on how tight these things are getting here, the strands, the plaiting. Sometimes when you have too many, whoops, sorry guys, too many strands, 
around the core it'll start to get really bunched up and you'll start to get you know um, little creases in the paracord here um, and that's when you know it's definitely ready to drop a strand sometimes I will actually back it up a little bit and then drop one just to avoid those creases um, and then I'll just kind of take notes like as you guys can see I have my notebook over here it's you know a little bit of chaos but I have written down there where I'm dropping my strands at um, my strand lengths and all those things so so I definitely recommend you know if you guys are planning on doing more than a couple of these you know or even just more than one take notes and yeah you guys can adjust these to your likings right so again now that we're a little ways down we're just going to pull everything tight we're just going to give this guy a little bit of a tug you can see it tighten up right there awesome again not too tight but just tight enough to make sure it's not loose just keep going a little bit and then we'll cut this strand out okay now we're down here a couple inches and just snip this guy off and I will see you guys when we're at the next uh, dropping point okay guys so here we are down at about the 26 inch mark and we're going to prepare to drop another strand here so right now we're at a 12 plat so six on each side and we want to drop this guy right here so again we're just going to keep plaiting a little bit until we get this in the position we want right so so we're just going to plot over it a couple times we should be able to get three strands underneath the strand that we want to drop so there's the strand we want to drop Going to tighten the ones above it and itself and again we're just going to lift these up slide it to the middle swing it to the middle and then we can give everything a nice tug so for this one like try not to pull it tight yet and we're going to keep going so it'll be under three over two on the right and under three over three still on the left hand side so again we're just going to plot over it a few times it's going to be this one here I'm not mistaken yep so that top one there will give everything a nice tug and if you watch this one here when we pull on this it should just tighten up a little bit yep and there we go not too tight again and now we will keep going we're just going to keep going until this guy here comes back around into position and then we can drop it into the core as well here we're getting ready to drop our next strand it's going to be around 28 inches grab this little snips here and we're going to just snip this guy here and 
again. We're just going to lift these up, swing this guy to the middle, and tighten everything else. Now that we've put a couple passes over top of our drop strand, we're just going to pull everything nice and tight. And we're going to give this guy a little tug, not too hard, just enough to make it taut. And we're just going to keep going this time until we get to about uh, 35 inches. Okay, so I just realized that I accidentally made this strand 8 inches too long because I'm supposed to take off 8 inches for the length of the handle. And every time I make one of these whoops, I have the same issue and I kept forgetting to write it down. So because um, we want this to end at four feet. So if we measure this, that's our four foot mark there. Just gonna snip that off. So when you guys are making yours, and I will put this note at the beginning of the video as well, make sure it is uh, three foot four inches, not four feet. Just gonna snip this here. Done. And then another thing we're going to do here before we get down to this point is we are going to pull back the outer sheath and we're just going to snip off about, we're just going to pull it back as far as we can. Uh, make sure it's in front of this guy here we cut off about six inches of the inner portion to help with our taper here let's see what this is exactly it's about yeah about six inches so we're going to cut off about six inches of this inner strand and then when you look at the core here that's just going to help a little bit with our taper as we work our way down this whip. So let's get back to the plating now that we've got that established here. Okay, so here we're at the 35 inch mark. And it is time to drop a another strand from the right hand side here. We're going to be dropping this strand here so again we're just going to tighten the ones above it and we're going to lift up the bottom two pull it to the middle. Again we want to make sure there's as many strands underneath it as we can. In this case the most we can get under it is two so that's what we're going to do. Give everything a nice pull now that we've dropped it. Gives it a bit of a tug. And now we're just going to plot over it. Under two, over two on the right. And still under three, over two on the left. We're just going to plot over this for a couple passes here and then we will be pulling that tight like we normally do. So now that we've gone down a little bit we're just going to pull everything tight here. We're going to give our strand here a little bit of a tug. It should be that middle one there. There we go. Just pull it nice and snug and tighten down all our other strands and we will keep going. Our next strand drop is going to be about, should be around 37 inches, but 
Um, we're just gonna do it once this next strand here is in position. Two more passes and then we should be ready to drop that one. That's one. We're gonna get one more strand underneath it here. There we go. So now we're just going to lift those up, slide this guy underneath and done. So now we're in an even eight plat, four on the left, four on the right. So again, under two over, under two over two on the left side here. And again, under two over two on the right hand side. And we'll keep plaiting for a few passes just like normal. And then we will pull that strand tight. Get out any slack that there might be in there. Okay, now that we've put a few passes over this guy, we're just gonna give it a little tug. You can see it tighten up there a little bit. And then we will just keep going under four, over four. And we're gonna keep this pattern until we get to around uh, 46 inches. One thing we're gonna do here to encourage the taper a little bit is we don't want this to be ending too close to the same part where this is ending. So we're just gonna give it a snip here. Just to stagger that out a little bit so it's not uh, so that they're not ending at the same spot. Okay guys, so we're down to about the 46 inch mark and we're just gonna drop a strand from the right side here. As you can see, it's on the bottom here, so we're just gonna plat over it a couple more passes and then we'll be good to drop it. Okay. And there we go. Okay, so this is the strand here we're dropping. Again, we're just going to pop it underneath and keep going. Again, it's going to be under two over one on the right here. And we'll still keep it at under two over two on the left. So we've gone over it a couple times. We're just gonna give it a little tug. See it tighten up there a little bit. That's what we want. And we're just gonna keep going a little bit. And probably the next one around should put us about at the end of this strand here. So, and then we can drop this other strand. Our goal is to drop it at the same time that this one disappears. So we can kind of introduce it back into the whip and uh, keep that nice taper going. Do one more pass and then we're gonna drop it. Okay, so again, we should be at about the 48 inch mark here because that's how long we made that strand. We're just gonna lift these two pull this into the core. So now, because we don't want these, all three of these ending in the same spot, this here, the shortest one, is the one that we just barely dropped. So we're just gonna cut this back a tiny bit, not very much at all. You know, about here, so it's still gonna have a couple inches over top of it. Oops.
and then this one we're going to cut back right close to the top here just to kind of encourage that taper some so now they're not ending in the same spot they're staggered a little bit more after a couple more passes we're going to pull that strand tight again so again remember now we're under two over one on both the left and the right hand side trying to cover up as much as the core as we can under two over one and under two over one now we only have two more strands to drop these ones we will be dropping one where this ball chain ends and the other one will be dropping right when this other strand ends when the last strand ends so then we'll have two strands in the core okay guys so here we're coming up on the end of the ball chain here so we're getting ready to drop our second to last strand um, we want to try and drop it as close to the end of that ball chain as we can to try and give it a nice um, like seamless transition basically our strand is going to take the place of that of this ball chain here and so here we are this here this top one here is going to be my shortest one so we're just going to put this one down below here and we're just going to plot one more time and just about perfect we have it here so there's our ball chain there again try and keep these nice and tight now we're just going to take our shortest strand here and we're going to pass it underneath now this one we're not going to cut till later because this is going to become our core pretty much so now we're just going to go down until we reach the end of this strand here and then we'll drop one from the left side so now here we are under one over one on the right hand side here and still under two over one on the left hand side couple more wraps and then I think we're going to drop it right now now one thing you guys can do about these tassels here is just take your scissors sometimes as we're going down they'll start to kind of pop out the end so I'll just trim those up so they're not going to end up sticking through our oh, missed that let's get it out of the shot <laughs> um so it's not sticking out the overlay of our whip. Uh, nope, sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. So now we're just gonna get ready to drop this strand here. It's the middle one, so we've got at least one underneath it. I'm gonna pull that to the middle. Now it's just gonna be under one, over one on both the left and the right side. just go over this a little bit so now we're finished with the core so now we're just plotting over these make sure guys you don't get these mixed up with your with your overlay strands these two center strands um, sometimes it helps um, when you're first starting out to take some tape and just tape these up or a rubber band sometimes we'll use and then as you get a little more experienced it gets easier to tell which ones are your working strands and which ones are your core strands so what we're going to do here this is the five inch mark again i just wrapped it in tape and then measured it with my tape measure and then wrote on it with a paint pen definitely recommend doing it guys it makes it really easy to find your spot but what we're going to do here is these are our two core strands
We want to taper it out. So one, we're going to cut one strand off at five foot six inches. That's gonna be right here. So we're gonna cut one of these strands out at. So once we hit the five and a half foot mark, we are going to be braiding over, sorry, plaiting over one strand. And then our second core strand, we're going to cut off at the five foot nine inch mark here. So the last three inches of this whip, we will be plaiting over no core. We're getting to the point here where we're only over one strand. Again, it's just gonna help with the taper. And I think it looks a little nicer in the end. Because we want, basically want as even of a taper as we can get. And if we can get a bigger taper, it just makes it crack that much easier, guys. So now we're getting to no core, guys. This can be a little bit tricky when you're starting, but just try and keep things tight. It can help, you can kind of push in with your thumbs and pull out to the side when you need to tighten it. But just keep going, it's the same principle, under one, over one. You're just going in between the strands is all. Like I said, it can help to kind of pull up on it too, just kind of using your thumbs, you can kind of push into that, pull them apart. Um, it can be a little weird at first, but it's really just the same principle. You're just splitting strands, pulling up on them every once in a while to keep them nice and tight. Don't pull down on it too much because you don't want a loose plait here. But if you kind of push up on them, it can help keep the plaiting nice and tight. Okay, so for this whip, we're going to put a two foot fall on it. And in this particular case, I'm going to do that out of our black paracord. So what we're going to do is we're gonna cut a four six, yeah, we're gonna cut a four foot section, if I could speak, <laughs> of this paracord out to make our fall. That's two feet, two more, give us four. Four feet there. And we're gonna cut this off. And this is where you're going to need your lacing needles, guys. And again, I will link this in the description below. Uh, where are my lacing needles? I will see you guys in a second when I find my lacing needles. Okay, so this isn't the lacing needle I was going to use, but it will work just as well. It's just a little needle here um, that you can thread your paracord into. And again, I will link all of these in the description below, all the tools I'm using for this. So you guys can find it on Amazon with my uh, affiliate link. So if you guys don't mind buying it from there, it will also give me a little bit of kickback and help support the channel. So. Yeah, so we're just gonna snip this on an angle here. So you want it about on a 45 degree angle like that there. We're just gonna take our little lighter here. I like using these little torch lighters because they just work really well. Um, and it doesn't matter what direction you hold it in. Sometimes with just the regular lighters, you can burn your fingers easier. We're just gonna take this Melt it a little bit. Try and form a little point there. And that's what we're going to use to screw it into our lacing needle here. So we're gonna screw that in. Should be fairly tight. Now we're gonna find the halfway point of our 
four foot section here. And we're just going to feed our lacing needle into, my other ones work better for this because they have a little bit of a point on it. We're gonna feed it inside of our paracord here. I'm just gonna push that in. This is actually for leather, it's not actually for paracord. So it's, I did end up having to actually file the sides down on this one because the top of it's flat, but my other ones are round. I will link those ones in the description. They work much better for this. This one's kind of tough, but you can use, don't be afraid to use some force to kind of try and push this through guys. Okay, so we've got it through guys. You want to pull it all the way through. So this is running all the way through the middle, it's doubled up and it's gonna form a loop on this side. Again, that's pushed through the middle of the other strand. And then you can kind of open up that loop if you need to. And then you can close it by sliding this down, just sliding it, the loop closed. That'll close the loop. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to attach this onto the end of our whip here. So we're getting ready to put our fall on our whip here. I have pulled the perma lock needle off, I think it's called, but the lacing needle anyways. Um, but make sure that the this part does not get pushed over the end of our whip of our fall here, because then you'll have to pull it out and do it again. But we're just gonna open up the eye in the end of the fall here, and we're gonna slide it over everything. Pull all our strands through here. And then we're just going to cinch it up like I showed you. We're just gonna pull on this end, push it through, cinch it up nice and tight against our whip there. We're gonna leave it kind of high here at first. Now for our whip, I think I, I did a couple passes here. I'm gonna um, start on the upper left with this brown strand. Um, we're gonna go around the back and form a loop here. We're going around the fall as well, guys. And we're just gonna go through that loop. All right. And then what I like to do to keep track of which ones I've done and what orders it is in, I like to tie a little overhand knot there just to let me know that I've already done it. So next I'm gonna go to this black strand, not the fall guys, this is our fall. Our fall is not gonna get tied around this. These are simply our four overlay strands that were left over. So I'm gonna pull this to the front. Again, form a loop, go around the back, and then we're going through that loop. We're going around everything guys, including the one that we just tied. This is the one that we just tied. So now what I like to do to keep the order I did it in, since we tied one knot in this one, we're gonna tie two overhand knots in this one to show me that I've already done it and it's the second one that we did. Then I'm gonna go back to this brown one here. We're gonna pull that one to the front. Pull it to the front. And again, this is one that we haven't done already. We're gonna form that loop, go around everything and then through that loop. These are just half hitches, guys. So it's a really easy knot, just half hitches. And then this guy, we're gonna tie three knots in. One, two, three. This is just a little tip that I kinda came up with myself. It doesn't take hardly any time to do it, but it works well. And then we're gonna take our last black strand here Again, form that loop, and then through the loop. Now this one, guys, we're not gonna tie a, a knot in because we're gonna pull this fall down a little bit. Whoop. Okay, <clears throat> so we just tied this last knot. This one, we're not gonna put a knot in. We're actually going to snip it on a 45 degree angle. And we're gonna melt it. Be 
careful guys because it is hot and you can burn yourself and we're gonna put this into our lacing needle now this guy we're going to we're gonna go over top of these four strands and we're gonna go underneath our fall because this is our fall here right guys so we're just gonna go underneath there pull it through we're gonna pull our fall all the way down nice and tight pull that down and then we're gonna pull this guy nice and tight now what we're gonna do here is in order we're gonna start with our number one right which is the one with one knot in it right this guy here one knot and we're just gonna pull that as tight as we can nice and tight then we're gonna move to our number two this guy we're gonna pull that guy nice and tight then we're gonna to move to our number three brown strand here pull that guy nice and tight and then we're gonna pull our last strand nice and tight up here so everything's nice and tight we'll give our fall one more tug here now what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim our strands and we're gonna trim our fall here a little bit but we're gonna trim this guy it's only going to be about an eighth to a quarter inch here probably about a quarter inch it's going to be pretty short just going to trim him a little bit just like that guys so it's just nice and short there i'm going to take our lighter and just singe it just a little bit i'm going to try and flatten it just a bit again be nice and careful now this, make sure not to cut your fall, guys. This is our fall. We wanna make sure that we're not cutting the fall. We just wanna cut these other three strands and we're gonna cut them about a half an inch long. So we're gonna cut them half inch to three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna do about a three quarter of an inch here. I'm just gonna trim those. Toss those in the garbage. And then again, we're just going to do a, a quick melt to the individual strands there. Just going to flatten it a little bit. There's this guy. And this guy. There we go. Now for our fall, which you guys may have been wondering, what we're going to do is we're going to pull on the center strand, pull the outer sheath back till it's about halfway. It's about a foot there. And what we're gonna do is, so that's about halfway, it's about a foot. We're gonna snip this off. And we're just gonna pull our sheath down. So this will also help encourage our taper guys because we have double, two strands, right? And then about here, it switches to just one strand right and then this we're just going to give it a nice melt and that's it we're done the main portion of our whip we got our fall on it now i'll show you how we're going to put this rubber chair tip on there so guys if you look here we wrapped some hockey tape around the top here before we put our overlay on so that it's a little bit swollen here so we can put our rubber chair tip on. Again, um, I believe this is a 7 8 inch rubber chair tip, but I will double check. So we're just going to take some two-part epoxy. We're going to mix that up and glue this on to the end of our handle here. And normally I try to do this when I have a couple of things to glue, but I don't right now. So we're just going to do it anyways. Just going to squeeze a little bit out on here. Remember it's equal parts, guys. Put our lid back on. And we're just going to mix this up here. 
I usually just do it on a piece of paper towel, but you can do it on any scrap piece of cardboard or whatever. We're not going to need a ton, but I like to get enough to coat the inside of my rubber chair leg here. So I'm just going to get some on there. And we're just going to rub it around the inside of a rubber chair leg rubber chair tip, whatever you call them, and get a decent amount in there. And then I'm just going to rub a little bit on the top of my whip here, just on the top there. Try and just get a little bit in there. And we're simply just going to slide this on here, push it down. The idea is to get enough to keep it on, but not so much that it's going to squish out the bottom. So I think we did pretty good. And we're just going to let that sit. This stuff here, I believe, takes five minutes. Um, but yeah, we're just going to let it sit for a little while. Okay, guys, now that we're finished plaiting our whip, and we've got our um, little rubber chair tip on here. Um, we're going to roll our whip. And now this is a really important aspect of making our whip because it will kind of um, take all these overlay strands and it'll kind of even out the tension between all of them. Because sometimes, you know, you pull some a little bit tighter than you do others. We're not perfect. And so rolling it can kind of distribute that tension a little bit. Um, this can also be done before you put the rubber chair tip on. In fact, that's what I usually do, but um, it doesn't matter too much. Um, now, the way we do this is with some sort of board. Um, I just have a piece of, uh, looks like half inch plywood that was in my dad's garage. So I grabbed it and I just sprayed a little bit of uh, Plasti Dip on the front here. Um, and then I, you know, sat it off the edges so I didn't dig into my mat anymore as I have in a few spots here, but that's just personal preference. Um, now you can use anything. I've seen people use a cutting board. I've seen people use giant marble slabs. <laughs> um, I don't have one of those. I have this, but you can use a cutting board, whatever works. Um, now I also have a neoprene mat here that I roll it on which just kind of helps keep it from sliding you can do it on the floor I just noticed that on the floor it kind of slides around a bunch um, but that's you know not necessary but yeah all we're going to do is we're going to lay our mat on the floor in front of or sorry we're going to lay our whip on the floor in front of us and we're going to take our board and we're going to put pretty much our whole body weight on it and we're just going to roll it a few times and then we're just going to work our way down the whip. Again, I'm pushing pretty hard here guys. I'm trying to put quite a bit of, quite a bit of pressure on it to make sure we get a nice even roll on it. And we're just going to do this all the way down the whip. A little longer. Sometimes to keep the end from twisting up, I like to put it, I'll take the, the fall and I'll put it under my foot or under my knee there keep it from twisting as much. Now as you get down towards the end of the whip where it's a little thinner, you don't have to push as hard um, just because there's not as much going on there. But still nice to give it a good roll. And there we go. There's your rolled belly. You will definitely notice the overlay is a little bit nicer. It'll kind of push strands into place where they're supposed to be. It'll help give it a nice rollout. Now the last step we're going to do guys, 
uh, the last thing we're going to do to this whip is wax it. Now, this step isn't necessary, but I highly recommend it because it's going to give you a nice weight to your whip. It is also going to help with that transition period, sorry, that transition point, which isn't super great on these whips just due to the fact that there's only one overlay but that wax bath okay guys so i have my wax here melted this is just paraffin wax um i usually try to heat it up between 220 and 230 degrees fahrenheit um, like i said just regular paraffin wax candle wax nothing special some people use i think beeswax um, some people use other stuff. I just use paraffin wax. Um, and what we're going to do is simply dip our whip inside. And we're going to leave it till it stops bubbling. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so we're simply just going to take our whip. And we're just going to drop it into the wax like so. Try not to touch it because it is hot. <laughs> Obviously. And I just found myself couple pairs of cheap tongs that I like to use for this they work really good but I used to use just you know sticks and as you can see here there's quite a few bubbles coming out in a few different spots over here there's a few of them um, and we're just gonna wait about a minute or so um, until those bubbles stop coming out sometimes it helps to kind of tap it a little bit get that wax in here basically we're just replacing the air in between the um, the air in the whip is just getting displaced by wax which will help weight it some and will help stiffen up that transition a little bit okay guys so I'm just going to take a couple of sheets of just paper towel here you can use any rag really I just use paper towel because it's disposable and easy to get and this is why I really like using these tongs because these I can just pick it up and I don't have to worry about trying to use a stick to try and grab it and we're just gonna dab it again this is hot guys so be careful but we're simply going to pull it out and just wipe off any excess wa wax. I do have a sheet here too. This is just an old bed sheet that I use to try and keep my floors wax free. Already, already tied a knot in my whip. Okay guys, so now our whip has had a little bit of time to dry. Usually I give it about a half hour. Um, this time I gave it uh, overnight just because I was filming late last night. So um, now what we have left to do is put the fall on the end of our cracker, sorry, the cracker on the end of our fall here. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna take our spike or a nail or whatever we have and we're just gonna poke it right through the end of our fall here. So it's right through, you can see a little bit of a hole right there in the, in the fall there. We are simply going to push the end of our cracker through the hole like this. So it's going through it. We're going to open up the end of our cracker here. And we're just gonna take the, the tassel end put it through the loop and then we're just going to pull tight that's how we get the cracker on our whip here now that we have that on here let's go ahead and test crack our whip okay guys we finished our whip here it looks pretty good um, it's all waxed it's got a pretty decent weight to it um, it's actually got not a bad rollout for this whip either you know that being a just a core and an overlay with no braided bellies underneath it um, so I'm actually you know pretty happy with this um, let's see how it cracks
So overall, I'm actually really happy with this whip. As you can see, it works great. It cracks really well. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments below what colors you guys make your whips out of them. I'm, I'm really curious to know. Anyways, for more tutorials like this one and just to have a great time, don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, until next time, happy cracking.